good morning wonderful people good morning welcome to the lalita sasanama live broadcast continuation last time i had messed up something and it went to my other youtube channel that's why i put it on the mainstream now well i got that problem rectified so here we are we are in the 121th verse of this sasranama before we get into it some couple of personal notes what i wanted to understand for all those who do not understand sanskrit because even i don't you see me struggling through many of these long complicated words of sanskrit it's a beautiful language one that has been much ignored many even of my hindu brothers and sisters do not know much of this sanskrit language we need to make this mainstream in india seriously be that as it may sanskrit language and sahasranama sahasranama every single one of them the bija mantras or the seed mantras of the devik shakti is already buried in the sahasranama this is why i keep telling all of you guys and girls just recite the sahasranama just listen to them recite them I shall put up a link for uh, the ones which I use. I just finished listening to the entire Lita Sasnama, by the way. Do that almost every the second morning when I get up. So you need to listen to it for you to tune, for your mind to tune into it. Think of it that way. You're tuning your system, your being, through the medium of your ears. to understand and to absorb the energies of the divine mother apart from the pictures apart from the form apart from the function apart from the meaning that we are discussing it is all far far beyond it and you will begin to know and realize this in your life as you recite it it's that simple so let's get into it this is the 120 of 121st verse दरांदोलित दीर्घाक्षी दर हासो ज्वलन मुखी गुरुमूर्तिर गुण निधिर गोमाता गुह जन्म भूहु हर आईज आर लार्ज एंड ब्यूटिफुल स्लाइटली मूविंग लाइक द पेटल्स ऑफ अ लोटस इन द विंड वट अ ब्यूटिफुल डिस्क्रिप्शन इज नैट दरा हासो ज्वलन मुखी हर रेडियंट फेस ज्वाला मीन्स लाइट राइट द फायर a radiant face shines with a gentle captivating smile guru murti she is the embodiment of the form of guru the divine teacher who imparts spiritual wisdom guna nidhi she is the treasure house of all virtues and divine qualities guna means quality gomata go go is like a cow Okay, in Sanskrit, Gomata, the mother of cows, she is the divine mother who nourishes and protects all beings. Like a cow cares for her calf, she is the divine mother energy. Nothing to be scared of with her. She knows you inside out. Guha, Guha Jan, Guha Jan Ma Bhuhu. She is the born in the cave of the heart, representing the secret mystical nature of her origins. 122 deveshi danda dandani tastha dharaksha rupini dharaksha rupini dharakaksha rupini pratipan mukhya rakanta tithi mandala pujita beautiful she is the supreme goddess and ruler of all divine beings she abides by the principles of justice and righteous conduct she manifests in the innermost space of the heart representing infinite boundless nature of her form she is worshiped by celestial beings who offer their reverence to her during auspicious moments and celestial events point 23 kalatmika kalanatha kavya lapa vinodini 
सचा मरम रामा वाणी सव्य दक्षिण सेविता शी इज द सोर्स कलात्मिका कला मीन्स आर्ट आत्मिक आत्मा मीन्स हार्ट ऑफ सो शी इज द सोर्स ऑफ ऑल आर्ट्स एंड द मिस्ट्रेस ऑफ ऑल आर्टिस्टिक्स एक्सप्रेशंस शी डिलाइट्स इन द प्ले ऑफ पोएट्री एंड आर्टिस्टिक एक्सप्रेशंस आर्टिस्ट टेक नोट she is adored and served by celestial attendants with beautiful fans like goddess lakshmi rama not rama rama wherever the dash is above the a that is the a pronunciation by the way so it's ra ma if it is a, a over dash over the a here it becomes rama sanskrit is a very rich language the goddess of speech vani see v a and and dash over that who are posited or positioned on our left and right side savya dakshina dakshina means south really number 124 adi shakti ameyatma parama pavana krithi anek koti brahmand janani divya vigraha how sweet the adi shakti she is the adi shakti she is the shakti of all shaktis present in this universe think of her as the primordial mother the primordial womb from in, from which entire creation arises so if you see embodied women for example embodied female of the species she is the representative of that she is the adi shakti she is the universal representation of that the primordial a power or energy that pervades and sustains entire universe she refers to the ultimate divine force from which everything originates the source womb if you might call it that this can't be, you can't imagine these things with your mind you might call it physical you might call it just a orb of light or any number of things these are not imaginary that's why i just say recite lalita sasnama things will come to you आदि शक्ति अमेया इमेजरेबल इनफाइनाइट लिमिटलेस नॉट टेल मी हाउ कैन यू इमेजिन दिस विथ योर माइंड इट सिग्निफाइज द बाउंडलेस नेचर ऑफ हर पावर विच कैन नॉट बी कॉम्प्रिहेंडेड बाय लिमिटेड ह्यूमन माइंड दे यू गो आत्मा सोल और द सेल्फ ही रिप्रेजेंट्स यू सोल और सेल्फ परमा परा मीन्स beyond supreme or the highest indicating the highest level or ultimate state of something pavana kritihi embodiment of supreme purity she is supreme purity it signifies that she is the power inherently pure and purifying in nature she is both pure therefore purifying anek koti brahmand janani divya vigraha anek koti many crores many tens of millions of brahmanda universes janani she is the mother of n number of crores of the universes can you imagine the energy there i'm just getting chills reading this the mother of immeasurable universes or the source of countless cosmic creations divya vigraha divya vigraha vigraha means form of divya means divine divine form or celestial embodiment she is that she is the power which is not limited to physical form but exists in a transcendental divine manifestation number 125 klimkari kevala guhya kaivalya padadaini tripura tri ंत्रोटेड the feminine has come on the planet to rescue us from the mire of narrow mindedness it is considered a powerful sound that represents attraction love desire we don't portray this more often enough in our world kevala single or alone indicating her ultimate independent nature 
she is the only one divine power guhya secret guhya is a secretive secretive or mysterious suggesting that her true essence and workings are beyond the ordinary understanding she is hidden from the worldly eyes kaivalya padadaini kaivalya means liberation padadaini she is the bestower of liberation or enlightenment she grants the ultimate state of oneness and liberation from the cycle of birth and death this is the quest of all vedic tradition liberate me from the cycle of birth and death moksha tripura three means three okay so tripura refers to the three cities or realms you can also call it sattva rajas and tamas everything in vedic tradition is referring to in creational aspects as represented by three when all your nakshatras are like that thinking of astrology it's all three right brahma vishnu maheshwara and saraswati lakshmi and parvati for example three gods three goddesses everything is three it refers to the sattva rajas and tamas it represents her ruler of three primary aspects of existence well you can also call it that physical astral and causal tri tri gadad vandya worship by the three worlds are adored by all beings in the universe trimurti the trinity of brahma vishnu and maheshwara tridasheshwari the goddess of divine beings or the ruler of celestial gods she is that number 126 kya trakshari divya gandhadya sindura tilakanchita uma shailendra tanaya gauri gandharva sevita lovely refers to the goddess being represented by three syllables aim clean and sau these are powerful seed mantras associated with various aspects of divine feminine energy you can research this more if you wish divya gandhadya adorned with divine fragrances indicating that the goddess is encompassed by an enchanting divine aroma sindura tilakanchita sindura is the red sindur that hindu women put after marriage between their you know in their on their partition of the head i don't know what that's called hair partition of the hair marked by vermilion tilaka on her forehead symbolizing her married status and auspiciousness she is married to kamadeva lord shiva permanently uma shailendra tanaya one of the names of goddess parvati who is the consort of lord shiva shailendra tanaya the daughter of the king of the mountains of referring to parvati so you can see the mythology of parvati if you want gauri gandharva sevita and then gauri is another name for lord goddess parvati like uma is gandharva sevita she is worshiped by gandharvas the celestial musicians signifying her highlighting her significance and admiration among divine beings number 127 Wait a minute. Let me scroll down for this. Okay. Vishwa Garbha Swarna Garbha Varada Vagadheshwari Dhyana Dhyana Gamya Parichedya Jnana Da Jnana Vigraha Vishwa Garbha She is the womb of the universe. We just spoke of that. Symbolizing her role as the origin of the universe. and the nurturer of the entire cosmos swarna garbha she possessing a golden cosmic womb swarna means golden color representing a divine radiant nature as a source of creation think of her as the golden light which i kind of managed to put around her over there the golden light over the Vagadeshwari she is the bestower of blessings indicating her benevolent nature her ability to grant boons and fulfill desires Vagadeshwari she is the goddess of speech and knowledge representing her as a divine source of eloquence wisdom and learning dhyana gamya meditated upon by seekers signifying she is the object of deep contemplation and meditation for spiritual aspirants all spiritual aspirants must finally come to her trust me we have ignored the divine feminine for far too long and she is coming and she is teaching us again on this planet aparichedya she is beyond comprehension 
or indescribable, suggesting that her true nature is beyond the grasp of ordinary human intellect. Jnana da Jnana Vigraha, she is the giver of knowledge, emphasizing her role as the bestower of divine wisdom and spiritual enlightenment. Jnana Vigraha, embodiment of wisdom, who she is, and personification of profound knowledge and spiritual insight. Sarva Vedanta Samvedya Satyananda Swarupini Lopa Mudarchita Leela Klipta Brahmanda Mandala She is known as the essence of all Vedanta, all Vedas. If you know her, you have known all the Vedas pretty much. There is nothing more to be known, indicating she is the ultimate reality and knowledge. Satyananda Swarupini She is the embodiment of truth, bliss, satya, truth. Ananda, bliss. So, Satyananda, truth and bliss. Lopa Murdar, Lopa Mudra, Ch- Mudra Archita, worshipped by Lopa Mudra, who was revered sage and the wife of ancient sage Agastya. This is given by the great Agastya Muni. What a gift. Lopa Mudra is known for her devotion and spiritual accomplishments. Leela Klapta Brahmanda Mandala playing or manifesting within the captivating cosmic spheres, suggesting she is the divine force behind cosmic creation and its enchanting play. Number 129 Adrishya Adrishya Rahita Vignya Tri Vedya Varjita Yogini Yogada Yogya Yogananda Yugandhara Lovely. Adrishya, she is invisible or imperceptible, implying that her true form is beyond the scope of ordinary vision. Drishya Rahita, without form or appearance, you need to understand all divinity is portrayed or spoken of in the Vedic tradition as both the form and the formless, both saguna and nirguna, both having a form and yet not having a form. This is the divine paradox. You need to really get into the text to understand this. Without form and without appearance. You might say, well, we just spent a whole lot of time in the last couple of these sasnama talking about form. And now we are talking about her as formless. Why is that the case? Isn't this a contradiction? Yada, yada, yada. This cannot be understood by a mind people. Indicating that she transcends all physical manifestations. Vigna Tri Vedya Varjita, the knower of all, suggesting she possesses omniscience and perceives everything in creation. That which perceives everything you are doing as a soul is also finally she is perceiving. Think of that for a minute. Vedya Varjita, free from the being an object of knowledge, signifying she is beyond the grasp of intellectual comprehension and cannot be fully understood through worldly means. There you go. Yogini Yogada Yogya Yogananda Yugandhara. So many wise there, right? The Yogini, she is the ultimate Yogini. Yogada, she is the bestower of Yoga and the knowledge of Yoga. She grants spiritual realization and union with the Divine through yogic practices. Yogya, she is worthy of Yoga, suggesting she is fit to be meditated upon through the practice of Yoga. Yogananda, the bliss of Yoga, saying, emphasizing that the ultimate union with her is accomplished by profound spiritual joy and bliss. Yugandhara, the fragrance of a yuga itself. Think of astrology, folks. We are in some yuga, some people call it Kali Yuga, I doubt it pretty much. We are in Dvapari Yuga and going towards Treta Yuga, characterized by scientific inventions. So she is the fragrance of an era itself. Symbolizing that she spreads her divine aroma throughout the cosmic cycles. The great cycles that is portrayed, right? Kali Yuga, Dvapar Yuga, Treta Yuga, Satya Yuga and so on. These are Yugas or great time cycles. Think astrology for a minute. Ichha Shakti Jnana Shakti Kriya Shakti Swarupini Sarvadhara Supratishtha Sadasadrupadharini How lovely. The power of will or desire, she is the power of that will or desire. You are desiring something. BMW, a nice looking man or a woman, whatever it is, hundred million dollars. She is that power of will 
whatever you are willing or designing, she, she is the root of that itself. Jnana Shakti. She is the power of knowledge, signifying whatever you are trying to understand, even when I am going on about explaining these meanings. Kriya Shakti, the power of action, indicating her role as the force behind all activities in the universe. Swarupini, Swa means self. Rupini, the self, she is the embodiment of, her form is the embodiment of all of these powers. That is Shakti for you folks. Sarvadhara Supratishtha Sadasadrupa Dharini. She is the support of everything. She is the basic foundation of the universe, suggesting she is underlying foundation and sustainer of all existence. Supratishtha, she is well established and firm in her divine nature, implying her unchanging eternal presence. Sadasadrupa Dharini, she is holding forms of the real and the unreal indicating that she transcends duality of existence and non-existence, with existence and non-existence. 131 Ekakani Bhuma Rupa Nirvaita Nirdvaita Dvaita Varjita Okay, there you are. The one with eight forms, Ashta means eight, Murti means form. One with eight forms or manifestations, what we call Ashta Lakshmi, right? Eight different forms of wealth. I just posted something on the community tab regarding the same thing. Wow. Without knowing this, what I'm going to do today. The one with eight forms of manifestation representing her diverse, multifaceted nature. These eight forms represent different aspects of her divine power. Ajajaitri, yeah, the unborn one, indicating her eternal, uncreated nature. Remember, remember uh, the Nakshatra Purva Bhadrapada, which we spoken of extensively in my channel. Ajajaitri, the ruler of Purva Bhadrapada is Ajaika Ekapada. Aja means one who is unborn. The unborn one, one who is beyond the cycles of time. Lokayatra Vidhayini, the support of universe's journey or the guide of cosmic procession, suggesting she guides all beings in their respective paths and destinies in the universe. Eka Kini Bhuma Rupa Nirdvaita Dvaita Varjita. She is the solitary one. Eka means one, symbolizing her self sufficiency and independence. She is not dependent on anyone above her, beyond her, beside her, below her, nothing of that sort. Bhuma Rupa, assuming the form of earth, Bhuma, indicating she encompasses, pervades all of creation, just like earth that supports everything. Nirdvaita Dvaita Varjita, she is beyond duality. Dvaita means duality. Nirdvaita, beyond duality. Dvaita Varjita, she is free from pairs of opposites and duality, emphasizing a state of non-discrimination and impartiality. Anada Vasudha Vridha Brahmat Maitya Swarupini Brihati Brahmani Brahmi Brahmananda Balipriya How lovely! Anada, she is the giver of all the nourishment. Anna means food, indicating her role as provider sustains all life. She is the mother, she sustains everything. Vasudha, she is the bestower of wealth, symbolizing her ability to grant prosperity. Vridha, she is the ancient one or eternal, suggesting her timeless and ageless nature beyond time. Brahmatmaikya Swarupini. The she, she is the embodiment of oneness with Brahman, the ultimate one reality. Brihati Brahmani Brahmi, their multiple forms, the vast or expansive, highlighting her boundless, all encompassing nature. Brahmani, the power of Brahman, representing her as the divine Shakti or the creative energy of Brahman. Brahmi Brahmananda Balipriya. She is the consort of Brahman, indicating her association with the Supreme Divine Being. Shiva, Rudra, all forms, basically. Her husband. The bliss of Brahman, suggesting she is the source of ultimate joy and spiritual ecstasy. 
Bali Priya, she is fond of offerings and sacrifices. This is why Vedic tradition is full of them. Offerings, basically. Bhasha Rupa Brihatsena Bhava Bhava Vivarjita Sukharadya Subhakari Shobhana Sulabhagatihi She is the embodiment of speech, symbolizing her association with knowledge, communication and expression. Brihatsena, she has a vast army, suggesting her divine power and support of all celestial forces. Bhava Bhava Vivarjita, she is free from distinctions of existence and non-existence, indicating her transcendental nature beyond dualities, beyond opposites. Sukharadya Subhakari Shobhana Sulabhagatihi Worshipped through happiness, implying that devotion and spiritual practices lead to seeking her. Bestowing auspiciousness suggests she brings blessings and positive outcomes. Shobhana Sulabhagati, radiating splendor, signifying her divine beauty and brilliance. Sulabhagati, providing an easy path. Sulabha means easy. Gati means the path. Or speed also you can say. Providing easy path and speed that indicates sincere devotion to her leads to spiritual progress. Raja Rajeshwari Raja Dayini Raja Vallabha Rajat Kripa Raja Pita Niveshita Nijashrita She is the Queen of Queens representing her as a Supreme Ruler and Sovereign Goddess Shakti Energy. All you beautiful women out there listening to this, she is the one you got to go for understanding what is really Kundalini. Okay? Because all women are awakening very strongly in this new feminine energy. Lalita Sahasnama is the go-to place for all you beautiful women out there. Raja Dayini, she is the bestower of kingdoms, suggesting she grants prosperity, power and authority to kings and rulers. Raja Vallabha, she is the beloved of the kingdom, signifying her divine affection and protection for the welfare of the realm and all its people. Rajat Kripa, the grace of royalty, indicating she blesses her devotees with royal qualities and blessings. Everything here, Raja means it's a royalty energy. Raja Pita Niveshita Nijashrita, residing on royal throne. It's not much of a royal throne, I put that, I apologize. Taking refuge in her own divine abode, signifying her presence and rule over all realms of creation itself. Where are we? Let me just scroll there. Okay. We are in 134, 135. Raja Lakshmi Koshanatha Chaturanga Baleshwari Samaraja Dayini Satyananda Satyananda Sagarame Kala. Again, Raja. She is the goddess of royal wealth and prosperity. Mother Goddess is the royal queen. Okay. This is not a sorry ass energy we are talking about. She's grand beyond the scope of what you can imagine. Koshanatha, the ruler of all four directions, suggesting her sovereignty and dominion over all realms. Chaturanga Baleshwari, she is the commander of all four directions of the army, representing her supreme leader and protector. If you come anywhere near her with some intentions which is not so savory, be prepared to get fried your brains off. Bambarajya Dahini Satyananda Sagara Mekhla. She is the bestower of imperial power, emphasizing her ability to grant authority and dominion over vast territories and kingdoms. Satyananda Sagara Mekhla. She is established in truth. Symbolizing her unwavering adherence to truth and righteousness. Sagara Mekhala. Sagara means ocean, adorned with the crescent moon as her ornament, representing her divine beauty in connection with cosmic cycles. Number 136. Dikshita Daitya Shamini Sarva Loka Vashankari. Sarvata Da. Hang on a minute. Sarvatri. Sarvarthas Datri Savitri Satchitananda Rupini. Sorry about that. Dikshita, she is an initiator of spiritual initiation. She initiates the path. 
Daitya Shamani, she is the destroyer of demons representing her, her power to vanquish negative forces. Nothing can stand in her way. She is the source of all creation. Even these lost creatures called demons. Sarva Loka Vashankari, she is the controller of all realms, symbolizing her authority and control over the entire universe. Sarvat Sarvartha Dhatri Savitri, she is the giver of all objectives, indicating she is fulfills the desires and goals. Embodiment of divine knowledge, wisdom, sacred hymns often associated with Gayatri, Savitri, Gayatri, there you are. Satchi Ananda Rupini, Sat Chit Ananda, Truth, Consciousness, Bliss. She is the form of Truth, Consciousness, Bliss. This is the object of all the yogis, that's what they are after. Deshakala Parichinna Sarvaga Sarvamohini Saraswati Shastramai Guhamba Guhirupini Deshakala, Desha is like country, like the land, Kala is the time. So she is beyond space and time, beyond the limitations of space and time. Sarvaga, all pervading, indicating she is present everywhere. Sarvamohini, Sarva means everyone, right, in Sanskrit. Mohini, the one who is all attractive. She is the enchantress of all, suggesting her mesmerizing and captivating nature. Once you see her, you cannot take your eyes off of her. Saraswati Shastramai Guhyamba Guhya Rupini. Guhya again means secretive, but let's get to that. Saraswati, she is the embodiment of knowledge, wisdom, and learning. Shastramai, endowed with scriptures of the essence of all sacred texts. You don't have to go on reading endless blah blah of Vedas. Just recite the mantra and you're done. The mantra of Lord Kartikeya, also known as Guha, representing her role as Divine Mother and protector of her children. She is the mother of Kartikeya also. Guhya Rupini, the one with mysterious form suggesting her two natures beyond comprehension. Don't try to imagine this with your mind. I keep telling that again and again. Number 138. Sarvopadi Vinir Mukta Sada Shiva Pativrata Sampradha Ish Sampradaya Ishwari Sadhu Guru Mandala Rupini. Okay. She is self liberated from all limitations and identities, indicating a transcendence over all worldly associations. Sada Shiva Pativrata, she is always dedicated to her husband. Sampradaya Ishwari, the goddess presiding over spiritual traditions or lineages. Sadhu Guru Mandala Rupini, the virtuous one suggesting her pious and righteous nature. She is the embodiment of Guru's divine circle, representing her presence and grace within spiritual circle of enlightened masters. Number 139. I think I'll finish with the next one, 140. Kulotirna Bhagavad Bhagavadadhyaya Maya Madhumati Mahi Ganam Bhagu Hyakaradhyaya Komalangi Guru Priya. How lovely. She is beyond the limitations of lineage. What we talk of the soul's lineage, the country's lineage, your karma, your land's karma, and all the rest of it. What we keep talking about, yammering on about karma, is the lineage, your ancestors, Maghanakshatra. She is beyond all of the stuff. That's why I'm bringing this to you. How to get beyond Nakshatra as well? Recite Lalita Sasnama. She is worshipped by devotees seeking salvation and liberation, symbolizing her role as the ultimate refuge for those seeking spiritual emancipation. Maya, the illusion. She is the enchanting one, implying her mesmerizing, captivating nature. She is Maya also. She is Madhumati also. She is adorned with sweetness or charm. Madhu is honey actually. So it's compared with sweetness or charm. Madhumati Mahi. She is the great mother of the universe. Ganamba. She is the mother of celestial beings or gods, signifying her maternal role towards divine entities. Guhyakaradhya. She is worshipped through secretive practices, suggesting that her true nature and mysteries can be realized through esoteric spiritual methods. Komalangi Guru Priya, she is, has dedicated limbs. Angi means 
the limbs, right? Komalangi. Komala means softer, delicate limbs. This is like a mystical aspect of her. Guru Priya. She is loved by Guru, indicating a close association with all the Gurus that are there. Last for today, number 140. Swatantra Sarvatantreshi Dakshinamurti Rupini Sanakadhi Samaradhyaya Shiva Jnana Pradayani Wow! Sarvatantra, Swatantra Swatantra, Independence Independence of her, suggesting her self-sufficiency and autonomy as the Divine Mother Goddess. Sarvatantra, she is the supreme ruler of all, suggesting her authority and sovereignty over everything. Dakshinamurti Rupini, she is in the form of Dakshinamurti. Dakshina means southern direction, by the way. Sanakadi Samaradhyaya Shivagnana Pradayani, she is worshipped by sages like Sanaka and others. And Shiva Jnana, she bestows the knowledge that Shiva himself has. She is the giver of the Pradayani, bestowing the knowledge of Lord Shiva. Imagine that. Imagine what you might know, what Lord Shiva knows. Who is going to give you that? She is going to give you that. She will see whether your self is worthy of it, your soul is worthy of it, your energy is worthy of it, and she will give you only that much. A mother does not feed her children. 10 years of food all in one go. She goes day by day, feeding you day by day things which you, you like, isn't it? Everything should be compared with a mother when you come to Lalita Sastranama. Alright folks, remaining 141 onwards, I'll do tomorrow or whenever my brain works a little more than it has done today. Okay. Meanwhile, take care, be safe wherever you are. Be happy, be content, be joyful. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti.